There is no economic recovery and the mainstream has been trying to avoid the obvious but occasionally the information comes out. It's so prevalent today that it's impossible not to see it. If you're looking at a secluded area or a certain set of statistics generally known, you would conclude that as expected, a V-shaped recovery is on now. But it's quite the opposite. And sadly, people are standing right in the middle of it and can't recognize how bad this really is. You came here for the truths so let me unveil that for you. Today, I'm going to show you some information that needs to be known, that needs to be shared, that needs to be understood by the masses. Sadly, it's just you and I, but this is really what they need to know. First, we're gonna look at what's going on with the stock market. I'm gonna show you the financial side. I'm gonna show you what's going on with the deficits. I'm gonna show you the spending and the debt. Then we're going to take a look at what I believe is absolutely key, but I need to set up the video with the excesses first. We're going to talk about what's happening with people people and their mortgages are going to look at the real estate market. It's so huge. I don't want to waste any more time. So let's get into it right away. As markets face a notoriously rough month, Jim Cramer says it's good to have some cash. Given that September trends tend to be a nightmarish month, it's good to have some cash. That's right. Hold on to cash. But he's not talking about a lot of money in there. Simply saying have some. People never like to hear that. But just as he recommended at one point buying gold, this changes so often you have to understand what he's talking about at that given moment. Not just Jim Cramer, but I use Jim Cramer because it's a representation of the average person in the financial system. This is how they talk, this is how they act, and that generally is not a good thing. They're always jumping all over the place and it's hard to keep an eye on all of this. If somebody is inexperienced and doesn't understand that they're simply following this and who knows, next week there might be a completely different recommendation and people don't understand that we're talking about trading here, not investing. And this is where it gets really silly. Kramer's week ahead, quote, this market's badly in need of another stimulus package. I know it's not huge news week, but this market's badly in need of another stimulus package. I think the next move hinges on whether or not Congress can get its act together to pass something, an event the market needs to break out of its doldrums. The market has barely fallen down after such a rally up and already it needs another stimulus package, we're looking at $3.5 trillion that the Federal Reserve has printed over the last year, basically $3.5 trillion just in that. We have interest rates that are basically at 0%. We have Fed programs that go from A to Z, everything in between. There have been so many stimulus packages from the government in one way, shape or form, loans here, loans there, pay checks to most people. It's been unbelievable. And I'll show you that more in just a second. And the market comes down by just this small amount. And already the financial community is freaking out. That should be a warning sign to everybody that's over leveraged and heavily invested in this market. Investors will look to the Fed to soothe the market next week, but that may be a tall order. The Fed is holding its last meeting prior to what's happening in November, and while it's likely to sound dovish, it may not give the market the details on policy that investors want to hear. I want to translate that nonsense into English. They want to hear lower interest rates, not just 0%. They want to hear negative interest rates, and they want to hear more money printing. They want to hear yield curve control, so we can look for these terms as they come out, okay? Yield curve control, they want to hear perhaps negative interest rates or not necessarily that they will do it, but that they will consider it. So far, it looks unlikely, at least based on what they've officially stated at the FOMC meetings. So we got yield curve control, we got the negative interest rates, and we need an expansion of the programs, the programs in their QE. What is it? QE4? Is it QE5? Nobody knows by now. It's all sort of mixed up together, but that's what they want. They don't want people to think that they're going to continue on with these programs, that's not enough. They need the expansion. That's how you know this market is messed up. 
As I said a few minutes ago, what we're looking at is an extreme level of spending and it's not enough because small amount down on the markets, everybody's freaking out. Federal spending tops six trillion dollars for the first time. Deficit tops three trillion dollars for the first time. Unbelievable. But look at what's happening with taxation. Taxation continues to increase all the time, all the time. You see it and now today it's not enough. You bring in trillions of dollars through taxation and it doesn't plug up the hole. In fact, it can never do so. But that's what they want. They want more taxation to fill this big hole that they have created. And where's the money go? I assure you, not to just causes, not to your pocket. It filters through this garbage system and they decide where it goes. Here's the chart that corresponds to that. You can see how excessive. Yes, over the years, by the way, it goes from 1998 up until present. Yes, it increases year over year, but we've never seen anything like we what we have today. Now, the stock market itself is excessive. It is extreme. And this chart just shows you the 10 stocks in the S&P 500 accounting for greater than 50% of August's 7.2% return. That is very unhealthy. That is very troublesome. At the top, we've got Apple and Microsoft and Amazon and Facebook and all of these other technology companies. And you can see that the market is getting more narrow and narrow and narrow and not enough money is interested not even in other asset classes. Forget about that. I'm talking about a shift into value or other type of stocks. There's no care for it whatsoever. It's simply just keep buying the biggest companies and everything is going to be okay. Well, we'll see what happens. August fragility is at an all time high. This is showing you the SPX top 100 call put volume ratio. Now, while this chart only goes back to 2010, Bank of America is literally saying right now at an all time high, that is very dangerous. That is worrisome, but nobody seems to have a care in the world. All right. This is what I wanted to start with for the real estate portion of this video. I put this at this point here, even though most people have already left, because it shows you that the excesses that people take are not just in what they think are investments. Okay, if I'm going to invest in this particular stock, I take the risk and hopefully most people know that. But this right here is where we start to get very dangerous. At the top, MBA average purchase loan size has continued to increase. By the way, this chart starts in the year 2000 up into present day, as well as the new one family house average sales price also been increasing over these years. So basically just trying to tell you real estate is getting more expensive. We know that at the bottom though, ratio of average purchase loan to new home average price 93.6. The amount of debt that is being used to purchase real estate today is at the highest we have at least since the year 2000. Thousand. That right there is so huge. It's such good information that we need to know, but people don't see it that way. Oh no, nothing. It's nothing like what we had in 2007. It's nothing like what we've had all of those years prior. No, no, no. Everything is safe and secure today. They won't loan to people that are at risk. Oh, that's right. So you could put 3.75% down and somehow that's okay. If you only have 3.75% of the total purchase price. My goodness, I cannot mathematically, I could not figure out a way that that makes sense to try and own that place. This is a problem and you can see it statistically right here in this chart. And now the second part, refinancing and delinquencies soar in divided mortgage era. Big news right here is that the serious delinquencies jumped 450% from what we had earlier this year. A record 1.1 trillion in loans originated in the second quarter. So what's happening? A lot of people are watching interest rates fall, so they are obviously going to refinance. For these people, they are able to then lower their carrying costs of this massive debt that has been accumulated, but it doesn't fix the problem. There's still this huge pile of debt. Do you see the problem here? 
If you're carrying $500,000 mortgage and somehow you're able to refinance this down, it helps you on your monthly payments. You've still got a problem because you have a $500,000 mortgage. And $500,000, by the way, for a big city isn't much today. Everything sort of seems fine today, but at a certain point in the future, if those individuals lose their employment, if they have trouble in some way that is outside of their control, they're going to realize why this was a dangerous policy to begin with. Taking on this much debt is never a good thing. Mortgage divide. Serious delinquencies and new loans have both increased. You can see the data here in this chart on Bloomberg. At the bottom, the money is in the homes and people with college education are still working, but the pain is being felt where people are unemployed. They expect an increase in the inequality gap. Wealth inequality is going to be much more extreme. We know this. We have seen this before and we looked at all that data and it's very obvious. The people today that are taking risks are not just those in the stock market. This is going on with people's own personal residence. The amount of debt that people have accumulated is too, too high on every level. That goes for credit cards, that goes for real estate and everything else. More borrowers with ability to refinance are using their equity to get cash. Look at this. About $44.5 billion in equity was tapped through cash out refinancing in the second quarter, the most in more than a decade. People are using their homes as an ATM. I have seen the comments before saying this is a fantastic idea. It's just sitting there. Why not use it? And that's totally fine when the market continues to go up consistently but when the market goes down you realize why that's a bad thing when there are people that take too much risk inevitably they get swiped out from under their feet a home should not be treated as an atm it is a very unwise decision in my personal opinion but you only see that to be the case every so often on a regular day hey it's all kittens and rainbows but this is very dangerous. It's getting very heated right now. And people, instead of getting more wise, instead of becoming more prudent, they're taking more risk. The global economy is bouncing back strongly from the collapse, but fresh data suggests that the early gains from the reversal of those lockdowns are already exhausted, adding to the evidence that the world economy could take many months, if not years to heal. That's very clear. We knew that already. When you look at what's going on with the GDP, it was going up in this very slow and steady rise. And then suddenly it fell down dramatically. The growth afterwards here is not even at the pace. It goes slower and slower. They can tell you it's going positive, but it never gets back to the trajectory it was before. I keep showing this diagram over and over again, but it's generally not understood by what I've seen in the mainstream anyway. They tell you, oh yeah, well, we are going to get the growth to be unbelievable when things are fine, when things are fine, when things are fine. But look, it's been a long period of time and things are not fine. Statistically, mathematically, and basically any way you look at it on many levels, there are some real hardships that cannot be re reversed or resolved by what they're doing. In fact, they're making it worse. In here, they're talking about some data from the UK, for example, claiming that the UK UK economy grew 6.6% in July from June, having expanded by 8.7% in that earlier month. So many people today in the UK are not doing well. They did not experience 6.6% growth or 8.7% growth or anything like this. It's economic stagnation and there's so many other things that are going on globally today. But you wouldn't see it if you were looking at the government provided statistics at face value. You might see the GDP, you might see the unemployment rate, you see the jobs numbers, and hey, everything's fine. But check this out out of the Financial Times. UK banks are warning that up to half of the 18.5 billion of quote bounce back loans are unlikely to be repaid and are lobbying the chancellor to prepare for the collapse. This is their wording, the collapse of hundreds of thousands of small businesses. Why isn't 
isn't this front page news? Why isn't the mainstream covering this? Why isn't the alternative media covering this? They're talking about nonsense. They're talking about garbage. Over the last few years, it's been nothing but garbage. And it's sick because they know what's going on. This information is public. If I found it, so can they. Shame on them. Three senior bankers estimated that between 40 and 50% of the 600,000 borrowers could eventually default on the debt as the prospect of a quick economic recovery fades. So you put a band-aid over it, you put that bandage on top, and you think it's going to resolve the issue, but it doesn't. It will just pop up later. It's no different than sweeping it under the rug. Eventually, it resurfaces and that's what they've tried to do maybe you can argue it was the right thing to do is not the right thing to do doesn't matter the end result is always the same you got to feel the pain eventually quick one to finish this video off vmware cuts pay for remote workers fleeing silicon valley twitter is among the tech companies localizing wages after moves facebook service now may alter pay if workers leave the bay area there's some serious things going on today with these remote work and the way that this is happening over the last little while a lot has changed i'm just following it just trying to give you an update there's definitely much more to this but we'll talk about it in future videos and that's all for this video. If you found it informative, hit that thumbs up button. When you do, you are supporting me. I want to thank you for that. If you want to learn how to sell stuff online, you can do so for free at the amazongps.com. If you want to check out my two books, I talk about everything regarding the financial system. Everything you need to know is in here. Definitely click on the link in the description or go to themoneygps.com. Wait a second, have you seen this video? Really good stuff and you're a lot of detail that is interconnected with the one you just watched. Click it, I'll see you there.